So the CPU on both sides is doing pretty good. Where it comes to the RAM, we're running on about two gigabytes of RAM. It's, it's fair to say it's actually 2.2 gigabytes of RAM. So 55% usage as opposed to about uh, a quarter or so on the left hand side. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, As a newlywed Linux user, or more experienced wizard just searching for tips, the world of Linux optimization is quite the rabbit hole to behold. So, in order to shield your fragile psyches from the abyss that is scraping the web for two hours in order to decrease your boot time by two seconds, Get set. We're riding on the internet. Guys, I debloated my workstation. This is what it looks like now. I'm gonna give you some tips on how to speed up your Linux. Well, of course, an instrumental part in increasing your Linux performance is, you know, improving your boot times. You want your shit to be snappy? Well, first off, and this sounds very deceivingly simple, is your startup applications. Now, this might sound like, you know, kind of obvious, but shit starts up and you might not want it to start up. Like, if you don't use Bluetooth, a hey, goodbye, fuck off, now that's not gonna be when you start up the computer and you're gonna boot up a lot quicker. I don't use a printer, bye bye. I don't use SSH, okay, bye. I don't have an Nvidia card, okay, bye. I don't need system reports because I don't give a shit, okay, bye. I don't care about updates, I can do that myself on my own time, okay, bye. All of that shit, I can disable that and now it's not gonna worry about that when I start my computer up next time. Another way to reduce those pesky boot times is read ahead profiling. Now first you're gonna want to sudo nano or via whatever the hell into etsy default grub. You're gonna put your password of course and you're gonna want to go on over to grub command line linux default. Now you're gonna see this term first which is quiet splash. Uh, basically what that does is it provides you with an exquisitely bullshit splash screen with a little logo on your startup and you don't need to worry about that and worry about uh precious system resources being expended for that and instead you're going to want to put profile now the profile term basically you might be asking what on god's green earth is that well it uses read ahead profiling which is a process upon boot that optimizes your startup routine and reduces the amount of reads upon your boot so it's actually really nice and cuts a few seconds off of your boot up time which is amazing now different distributions of linux use different solutions for read ahead profiling you might want to research into that and you know things vary between distributions but generally it should provide a net decrease so just experiment with it see what happens now if you were dissatisfied with the scarce amount of options that the startup applications menu provided you then you might find some luck in using systemd dash analyze and then blame now basically what this does is this gives you a comprehensive list of how many milliseconds in time certain services or processes take when your system's booting up. So as you can see, I have all these lines, I press enter, I'm scrolling through them, and in a descending fashion, it'll show me how much time these processes took to boot up. This is great if you are like, hey, who is the fucking culprit slowing down my computer preventing me from being an epic Linux god? Blue man mechanism, oh, I don't use Bluetooth, I don't want blue man, that's one you want. Uh, might want to, you know, disable, right? Network manager, if you use ethernet, there's no reason to have that on. So you just take a look. Systems may vary and most of these things you should definitely research before disabling because a lot of these are sensitive system processes or essential. But it's good to look through here and just see what's fucking with your system because you would be surprised. So we've taken action against the pesky boot times, but what about the internet browser, right? We use browsers every single day. I would be remiss not to give you some tips on how to speed it up. Well, first on Firefox, now this is going to highly depend on whether or not you use this feature and that's session restore. Session restore is the feature on Firefox where if you accidentally have your Firefox erroneously destroyed, maybe you, you know, your system crashed or something, you rebooted and you forgot, Basically, you open up Firefox and it'll keep all your tabs from last session. So, you can disable session restore if you don't use it. If you do, you might not want to take this tip. Basically, to disable session restore, you'll want to go to about, colon, config, proceed with caution, yeah, fuck you, I'm gonna do this shit. Then you want to put this into the search bar. Browser, dot session store, dot interval. 
Now, this is the interval between basically how many times it's going to uh, write your session to your disk, and that can honestly take a toll on some slower computers, so you don't, you might not fuck with that. So if you want to make it so it never ever does that, keep in mind this will essentially disable session restore. You're going to want to go to this interval option and you're just going to want to chuck a bunch of zeros, about four on there. And bam, the interval's super long and now you won't have to worry about that potentially fucking with your disk. Close Firefox and launch that bitch again and session restore should be completely disabled. Another web browser tip for your internet surfing needs is if your computer feels a little bit spotty while browsing the web, you might benefit from putting the Firefox and network cache into your RAM. Now keep in mind, if you have a low amount of RAM, and I mean 4 gigabytes or below, I would not recommend doing this at all, because this takes a fair bit of RAM and you're gonna need that for crucial system processes if you're scarce on that shit. So you're going to want to type our old friend about colon config into the bar again. Do not warn me, by the way, fuck you, accept the risk. And then you're going to type this. Browser.cache.disk.enable. Now what you're going to want to do is value right here, this little value, toggle that shit to false because you don't want it. This is only half the battle. What else you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that Firefox caches everything to RAM. So in order to cache things to RAM, you're going to want to put this in the search bar as well. Browser.cache.memory.enable. Now make sure this is set to true. Now you're also going to want to set the capacity, as in how much memory it's going to use for this. So then you're going to want to put something like browser.cache.memory.capacity. Now it's probably going to be set to something like negative 1, and that's egregiously low considering you're not writing to your disk anymore, so you're going to want to change it to something more similar to, you could put it to 512 megabytes if you want, something like that, and if that's so, you can put 5 followed by 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 which is something like 500 megabytes. Now, if you have RAM to spare, I would heavily consider giving it a whole gigabyte, which would be 1 followed by 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. After that, just press the check mark and all of your network cache should be written to your RAM as opposed to your disk. And on Firefox, if you're having trouble displaying videos or displaying web pages, then you're going to want to go to this little performance tab right here, uncheck this, and uncheck hardware acceleration, as hardware acceleration doesn't work for everybody. And you know, it wouldn't hurt to just give it a try and tell it to fuck off. Now here's the tech tip that is going to kind of shock the comment section, I'm sure, because I'm going to tell you how to enable Z-Swap on your system. Now here's some, some things you gotta keep in note is that Z-Swap uses a pretty good amount of your CPU, but it improves overall desktop responsiveness and using applications. Now, if you have a very weak CPU, I would not recommend using Z-Swap. In the comment section, people are going to be, you know, lambasting each other and crucifying each other about, you know, ZRAM is better, Z-Swap is better, ZRAM is better. Typically, I would look into ZRAM if you have an exorbitant amount of RAM on your system. But in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to enable Z-Swap. Basically, the first step is that we're going to trek back into this file, this lovely file, etsy default slash grub put in the password and we're going to go to grub command line Linux default now here is where you know kind of the this is a little bit a little bit extensive if you have less than four gigabytes of RAM you should put these options into this little space right here if you have over four gigabytes of RAM you should put these options now if I wanted to look at my system and see what I got I would go to system info and then let's see I got less than four gigabytes of RAM on this virtual machine. So I'm gonna use this. So then I'm not gonna delete my profile, of course, don't delete that. Any other options you can keep. Okay, all of my options are good to go. So then I'm going to control X and then press Y, press enter to save that, but we still gotta regenerate our grub config. So after I've edited my Etsy default grub, then I'm going to do sudo update dash grub and it's going to regenerate my shit. But that's not all, we still got a little bit more to do. Now we gotta add a little module to our um, init ram fs. So the way we do that is I'm going to do sudo nano slash etsy slash init ram fs dash tools slash modules. 
Now it's empty right now and all you gotta put in here is Z3 full. Z3 full, that's it. And then exit, Y, enter, bam, and that should be saved. Then after this, you gotta update your init RAM FS, sudo update dash init RAM FS U. And then generates it, give it a little second. Now in order to see if Zswap has fully actually activated on your system, you have to reboot, which I just did. I open a new terminal instance and I'm gonna do D message, and then I'm gonna do grep, and then I'm gonna do Zswap. As you can see, it grabs Zswap, which means it's been turned on, so we got it. Pretty snazzy. You were not gonna fix this computer, are you stupid? The screen was destroyed. But I don't have one now! Well, I don't know what to tell you, except you broke the damn computer. It can be fixed! No, it can't be yeah, fixed! Yeah, yeah. <laughs>